Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com, where we are all about developing for the NVIDIA Jetson Developer Kits. On today's show, we are going to install Visual Studio Code by Microsoft and add Python support for it. There are several different ways to install the open source edition of Visual Studio Code. One way, of course, is to install from source. However, today we are going to install a build from code.headmelted.com. The builds are automated builds of the open source edition of Microsoft's Visual Studio Code. It says here that the primary focus of this site is to provide builds of the open source edition of VS Code for less common platforms. In particular, we are interested in ARM64. I have written some convenience scripts to install Visual Studio Code from the headmelted.com site. On the Jetson Hacks Nano account on GitHub, there is a repository named Install VS Code. Let's clone that repository. And then we'll switch over to that repository's directory. There's only one script, and it's pretty simple. Let's take a look at it. There are two scripts that we pull down from the repository. The first script sets up the keys to the repository, and the second script installs VS Code. Let's well, install VS Code. Installation complete. Now we can run Visual Studio Code. The first time that Visual Studio Code is launched, it also opens up the documentation in a browser window. Now we are ready to add Python support. Let me lock Visual Studio Code to the launcher. I have a Python project that needs a little bit of help. We've had reports of an issue with not supporting Python 3. Let's download this repository. And we'll switch back over to Visual Studio Code. Close this up. full screen. Let's open up our Explorer and open up a folder. Let's open up the folder that we just downloaded. Okay. And let's take a look at this Python file. Visual Studio says down here that the Python extension is recommended for this file type. Let's install it. Reload required, it says up here. Let's do that. gives us another message. The linter pylint is not installed. According to Wikipedia, a lint is a tool that analyzes source code to flag programming errors, stylistic errors, and suspicious constructs. I like that. Suspicious. Let's load pylint. And it says that there is no pip installer available in the selected environment. We can see that we're using Python 3.6.8. 64-bit. So let's install pip. We need to open up a terminal. We'll say new terminal.
Okay, that looks like it went well. And let's take a look at this, Python. Here's the optional steps. Let's install a linter. It says here to open the command palette and select the Python select linter command. Control shift P. Let's look for linter. Select linter and yeah, we'll just use pylint. Let's install that. Our linter is installed. Let's go back to our files, to the Explorer Face Detect. Let's close this up. Let's try running it. We can right click on the file. Run Python file and terminal. And it says no module named NumPy. NumPy. One of the two. Let's install NumPy. This will take a while. Let's open up our system monitor. Okay, we have installed NumPy. It would probably be faster to install it using apt-get. Let's close our system monitor. While we are at it, let's format our program. Format document. This makes sure that our program files are all formatted the same way. The formatter is not installed. Let's use black as our formatter. Okay, let's try it again. Format document. Changes it around a little bit. Let's save the file. We see we have a problem here. Let's take a look at it. Unused variable. Oh, that sounds pretty horrible. Let's take a look at it. And it's upset about this return, but that's okay because that's what this particular call returns. We just don't use it. Let's take a look at simplecamera.py. Oh, it has a couple of problems. Invalid syntax. This is the difference between Python 2 and Python 3. It looks like it's missing some parens. You found another error. We'll save that. Unnecessary semicolon. Oh, that's that old C programming coming back to bite me. Fix that. We already know about the return value and window handle. What is that about? No, that looks okay. We'll leave that. Let's format our little program. And we'll save it. So it seems relatively happy. Let's see if we can run our program. Let me move the microphone out of the way. Looks like that works. Let's close that. 
one of the nice things about having an IDE is that we could run this in a debugger. Let's go to our debug window. Start debugging. And we get an exception has occurred error when we close the window. So here's the problem. You close the window and then you try to get the window property. But when you close the window, of course, it doesn't have any properties anymore. I'm sure there's a clever way to get around that. I don't know what it is right now. So I'm going to ignore it. But it's nice to know that you could actually debug your programs this way. Let's stop debugging. Another nice thing about Visual Studio Code is that it has integrated source control. Let's hit this icon so we can see the changes that we made. They show up as a diff. That's pretty nice. And we can commit directly to Git from this little panel. Let's go check out face detect. just to make sure it works. There we are. It's a little square. It sees our eyes. So it looks like that works. So it looks like that works. So there you go. We've added Visual Studio code and then we added Python support in it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.